And welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today in flying school, we're going to have a look at power off stalls. Power off stalls often occur when you are in your landing configuration and approaching a landing and you maybe you get distracted. Let's go practice a few. Let's come back to a landing and maybe we'll throw in a spin as well. Let's get going. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All in next plane 11. Props, jets, and much more. All done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. Well, welcome to Gawler. And here we are parked outside the hangars, ready to go for a flight in our camoed robin 401 this is the aerobast one guys so if you're uh, interested in getting a, a robin 401 then um, this is a lot of fun it's a little sensitive um, not super training but they do get used for a lot of training i believe and uh, yeah so we're going to take this one for a flight this is the Gawler airport uh, it's pretty close to what it really is so if you would like the airport, feel free to give me a, send me a message. I've had uh, someone pop and contact me this week, and I've sent him a copy. So let's get the aircraft ready. There's not so much to do in this one. Uh, it's a little bit easier being that it's all really just computer controlled. So unlike the uh, the Cessna, we don't, we're not going to do all sorts of run-ups and bits and pieces. At least, at least so far, I haven't worked out how to do it. So... We're going to take out here. Now, we're going to go out here on runway 31. So we'll taxi down quickly and we will have a look. Doesn't look great in blue. This is so easy to do, guys. So easy. All they did was I uh, went on Google, downloaded some camo uh, squares, really, and um, opened up the, the plain white uh, version of the the aircraft in the schemes and um, just basically dropped it over you didn't even have to be careful because if you overlap the edge of the wing or the fuselage or the tail or whatever you you're putting it over it just doesn't show up it's pretty simple it's it's not fantastic but it's a bit of a start and if you have windows 10 and the creators edition with the uh, paint 3d then you can do it in there. It's a breeze. It's absolutely a breeze. I saw someone on Facebook today asking about getting some custom paint jobs done. Look, you, you, you could probably do it on something better if you want to be really, really accurate and you've got a lot of fine work you want to do. But certainly, if you just like a little bit of fun, I've got a camo one, I've got a racing red one as well of the Robin now. So, uh, And they're all marked up with the Let's Fly VFR. So we've checked around the, the circuit done a little bit of a I was having a look to see about you know what sort of run up should I do but uh, I've got to be I've got to say this um, G1000 has, has got me a bit bemused at the moment but I just love flying the airplane so we've just given a bit of a run making sure it's all good I did actually try and do the um, magnetos doesn't appear to have any so <laughs> so I give it a bit of a run I flick the switch and, and nothing actually happens so uh, you know I guess that's part of being a diesel you know, I guess it doesn't need anything does it so all ready to go let's uh, idle down and then let's taxi out onto runway 31 so this is 31 and 13 coming from the other direction lots of aircraft and this is how you would find Gawler often on a Wednesday uh, ready to go flying always a lot of training and gliders they tend to come in about 10 o'clock after it's warmed up a little bit and they're ready to go so we're all lined up we're all ready to go uh, might make a radio call now Robin 401 rolling on runway 31 caller remember this is a non-towered airport so the radio calls are really just letting people know that you're there and what your intentions are so we're going to take off now here we do a left hand circuit on this runway and we do if we were to turn right and take off down runway 05 which we're going to come back and probably land on um, we do left circuits there and we do rights when we go the other way keep away from the town 
Okay, powering up nice and smooth. Get all the power in there. Let's take another view. Let's mix it up a bit. And away we go, airborne. So what's the idea of today's flight? Other than a bit of fun, and it is a bit of fun as well, but there's a somewhat serious part. What we're going to look at today is power off stalls. There are two main types of stalls you would do in training, power off and power on. Power off stalls, now we're gonna turn, just turn left here and start our left turn to uh, continue to gain height. And what we're gonna do is depart overhead, which is uh, done by basically flying the pattern but once you get a pattern height you keep increasing the height you just keep taking altitude and uh, once you're, you turn left on what would normally be your downwind leg and you get probably halfway down and you're over the runway then you turn left and you can depart from there it's a very common way of departing the pattern if you're going on a nav flight or in our case to our left there is all our training area out to the hills and back to that highway which you will see no doubt in a moment as we take make our left turn and that's the main highway there up to New South Wales and you can go to Melbourne if you like that way as well it's certainly there so let's get back to what we do we're doing power off to power off stalls when these normally occur is you're in landing configuration your flaps are all down you're at low power low speed and Maybe you get caught by a gust of wind, maybe you're just not concentrating, who knows? Maybe you've done a long flight and you're a bit tired and you get distracted by a passenger at the wrong time. And you know, all these things are very possible and I'm sure there's a lot more scenarios that could happen. But at the end of the day, you would lose control. So the whole point of this is, and we're going to, I'm planning on doing a number of them, is that we put ourselves back into a leaning speed we get ourselves into the wide arc we've got our flaps on full we're going to power back and allow the aircraft to come into a stall now you've got two in a real aircraft you would know it was about to stall by either the stall warning coming on which will start to normally make a noise just a buzzing noise uh, within about 10 knots of when you actually physically stall the aeroplane and that's when the air separates from the wing and no longer will hold you up because of your angle of attack it's all about angle of attack guys the second part of it is making sure that you recover without losing too much altitude because that would be crucial if you're at 500 feet and you you go oh wow enough to stall the airplane okay so you need to be ready and Believe me, a lot of people die during this phase, you know. It's the most dangerous part of flying is your landing and your takeoffs. Very little happens to people in the middle. You, know, you can always cruise down and land unless something really structurally serious happens to your airplane. So we're going to cruise out. Now you can see the training area that's heading. Well, if we headed straight ahead now, we would probably fly all the way over to... Uh, uh, Truro Flats, which is about 15 20 minutes away. So, we're getting ready, we're powering back, and we're going to try and maintain our height. It seems to be a little bit uh, rough in the air today, it's bouncing around a little bit. So, we're bringing in some flap, our power's low, we're coming into a fairly low speed, and it just nose is coming up a little bit. There's your stall. Now the idea is to maintain it straight, power back up, clean up your aeroplane and you would go around. The whole point of it is to lose minimal height. It's not about pointing down at the ground or pointing the nose down to gain height because you haven't got time to do that in a landing configuration. If you've turned base and you're making your final approach at, uh, at say 500 feet, you can't afford to lose a lot, but I will show you what happens if you hold it in in a little while, guys. So that's our first one. Now, the things you need to do prior to doing this 
and I did do it, but I've you now I've edited the video so it doesn't take three weeks for you to watch it. Is you need to do some clearing turns. So you turn 90 degrees and you check underneath and behind you because you can't see. You need to check no one else is there. You need to also make sure you're in a safe area. And here we go again. We just I put the nose up a fair way this time. We've got the flaps down. We're holding it up. There's your stall warning. And just check how much speed I lost in the recovery there. So you bring your nose back level. You get your flaps up and the power up all together. You will need a little bit of rudder as well because the P factor will twist your aeroplane around a little as you add that power. So you have to be very careful. Okay, here we go again. Okay, we're fairly low speed now. Okay, there's full flap coming in. The last one we did, we only did first stage flap. It's good to check that because you may choose in some situations to come in with minimal flap, especially if it's very windy. If it's really windy, you're probably better off carrying a little bit of extra speed. Okay, and we recover straight away. And in fact, we're starting to climb again already. Flaps up, full power, and we lost really minimal there. Now, the other part of uh, detecting a stall on your aircraft, and in a sim, it's probably going to be difficult unless you find a plug-in. Um, now, head shake, is, I do have shed head shake uh, in here, but it doesn't give you that feeling. What you would feel if you had a force feedback joystick or you're in a real aircraft, you can start to feel a little bit of a shudder. And that's just as the air is separating off the wing. Okay, you'd expect the wing to flow smoothly over the top and out the back. But when you stall and your angle of attack becomes too high, and this is what happens when you hold it in. You can see the descent rate, even though I'm holding it level, was dropping really quickly. And the whole point of this particular exercise here is really just to show you how quickly you lose, lose height. We're losing nearly 2,000 feet per minute and during part of that, uh, that little exercise. That's not an exercise you would normally do with an instructor, guys. You know? And again, I'd just like to highlight I'm not a CFI or an instructor. I'm someone who's just had uh, a bit of real-world flight experience, and I'm just sharing that with you. These things I have actually done in a uh, in Jabiru's out of this particular airport at Gawler. So I've done all this before. I've done it for real. So if you're not sure, I will actually put in the CFI list of videos as well at the end for you guys. There's a really great series for you if you were if you're interested in looking at what goes on and all the different aspects of flying. There's a really great series by uh, Cindy. I can't think of her last name, but she's a CFI in the United States and her whole series she just stands there and does your ground school she talks to you explains to you every little facet and all these quite short um, instructional videos they're really good I really like them and she's not full on like some of the other uh, videos that show you how to do it and they're all trying to sell you a spot in a uh, flying school I think I really can't do with it I liked hers because they were just very down to earth. That's the sort of person I think I am. So, all right, we're going to do a spin now, just for a bit of fun, because I like doing it. So, what do we do? We get our nose as high as we can. We put the power up to get it up initially, and when the wing drops, which is just done, you really should bring your power back. You use your rudder against the direction of the spin. So. In that case, I was spinning left, I would add right rudder, I would have the power back initially, and I would put the nose forward. So, nose forward, first step, let's run it again. No, first step, rudder against the direction of the, the spin, stick forward, nose down, and as you get to mere speed and you've actually stopped rotating, then you can add power as well. So, okay, we've done enough for today. Let's head back towards Gawler, which we're now flying over. Then you can see the airport just to the left there, about 45 degrees. So the runway that you can see running longitudinally, the same direction we're going is 0, 5 and 2, 3. So we're going to run down, do a left circuit over runway, oh, for runway 
two three. Sorry, runway zero five. So two three is in the direction we're going currently, guys. Just to orientate you a little bit, it's sort of westerly. And really, most of the time in Adelaide, the winds come from the direction we're looking at at the moment. We more often probably use uh, zero five than do two three. But so we're going to fly in. I think I'm a little bit high, high at this point, so I need to get down. Our altitude is 160 odd feet above sea level, is the ground level of the airport. So we should be at 1,165 feet, I think it is. So we cruise down left and getting your spacing. Now I know this well, that's why I like to do these things at this airport. You may or may not have noticed a set of. Uh, glass houses that we are flying towards I know that that is the right distance out because they're actually there we fly down we fly probably just on the inside of them because if we fly too much to the right we actually can encounter military airspace it's very very close so no, not that it, uh, Edinburgh is going to send out a uh, an F-18 but you might get a nasty, a nasty letter in the mail from them for um, incurring on their airspace this is quite a challenge here because the airspace is in several layers going vertically and layers going out around us as well from here. And sometimes they lock off the, the bottom layer but leave the top ones open or they, um, they stop the bottom layer of airspace that we can fly in which goes up to about 1500 feet but then they lock out the, two, the 1500 to 2500 feet so you've got to check your NOTAMs. That's probably something we will talk about in the future as well. So we're just at the end of the runway now, and it's a good time now. I've already gone through and done my pre-landing check, so I've checked my brakes, my fuel quantities, my harness hatches, and if I had heat and I needed it, the heat would be also on now. We check that we're back coming into the white zone, which have our flaps in, and now when you get about 45 degrees, if you look back over your shoulder, and this is a view from back at the tower. At 45 degrees is the point that you turn your base leg. Okay. So here I've started the turn. I'm descending. And I'm in blue camo, so you shouldn't see me anyway, should you? Hey. There we go. Doesn't look too bad. So we're turning down on our base leg. Getting ready to turn on to final. So what are our radio calls? Okay, as a sports pilot, we would have had a call uh, normally at a reporting point. There's a, normally a reporting point, which is uh, we were just over in one of, as we came in initially. And that would have been Robin five miles north inbound for runway zero five you would have entered the downwind you would have gone robin 401 entering left downwind for runway zero five we would have then flown down as we turn left to our base robin 401 turning left base for runway zero five and then we would have had robin 401 turning final for runway zero five and each time it would have been gore at the beginning of the year. So here we go. Let's see whether we manage to get a decent landing this time. Just holding it off, holding it off, and not a bad touchdown. Not too bad. Again, remember you change your view from the runway to the far end and hold that nose up on the horizon or so and let the speed bleed off until those wheels touch down. And we haven't done too bad there. I didn't get the, um, the stall warning, which was always nice just to get the stall warning before you touch down there we go flaps away and let's taxi and so i hope that was been helpful for you guys next time we will probably do or certainly sometime very soon we will do uh the power on stalls which can be then you have a bit of talk to worry about as well probably a little bit more dancing on the rudders so we'll taxi in and we will come in to the hangars and park ourselves up. Radio call here would be Robin uh, would be Gawler, Robin 401, 
clear of all runway is Gawler. So just let everybody know that you're off. So if you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, please feel free to hit that subscribe and like and that little bell thing that goes bing every time you get a new video from the channel. If you're returning and coming back to watch with us again, then thank you very much for coming back. So, shall we do a wrap up? I think we should. Okay. So, power off stalls are all about your approach to landing, and power on stalls are all about your climbing out and making sure that you don't stall or how to recover if you nearly get yourself into a stalling position as you climb out. So, no, look, it happens to a lot of people. You've just got to be ready. So, thanks for coming along again. Hope you like my little blue camo aeroplane and until next time, we will catch you here again on Let's Fly VFR. Catch you soon. Bye bye. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.